Hey yo, what's good guys, welcome back to Annie Recapped. In this episode, we'll go through an interesting show called The Ancient Magus Bride. If you haven't already done so, do subscribe to Annie Recap to find more awesome animes like this to watch on your feed. And now, let's get to the show. The story begins with a young girl, Hattori Chisei, signing a contract to be up for an auction. Although they are telling her that it is her choice to sign, she knows that she doesn't have any other choice. After she signs the contract, the auctioneer puts a collar on her neck, implying that she is a slave. On her way to the auction room, Chisei can see a magical creature and reveals that she has been able to do so since childhood. At the auction, a mysterious man, clad in black and crimson, enters the room and buys her for 5 million pounds. The other buyers have a problem with him but cannot say it to his face. In the reception room, the other guy tries to instruct them that he shouldn't have barged in like that, but he doesn't care and asks Chisei to follow him. On their way, Chisei is playing with a tiny magical creature, unsightly to commoners, and the other reveals that he can see them too. Chisei is taken aback by this, and he tells her that she will be his apprentice from now on. Elias Ainsworth, a literal walking skeleton, assures her that she is fortunate to be able to see them, but the other doesn't think that that's the case. Since her childhood, she has been looked down on just because she could see scary things, and the others took her for simply being stupid and creepy. After her mother died, her relatives passed down weird comments, enough to traumatize a child. Chisei is enraged that he called her fortunate and told him that not a single thing has happened in her life that made her smile. Seeing this, he assures her that she will soon find out how fortunate she is and instructs her to close her eyes. Elias casts magic manifesting weird webs out of the ground and teleporting the two of them to someplace beautiful. As Chisei opens her eyes, she is mesmerized to find such lush greenery in the house. Upon asking, Elias informs her that they are in West London, his hometown, and the two will start living here from now on. He reveals that he is a mage, an ancient species that is almost endangered now. After he takes off her collar, freeing her from being a slave, he instructs her to remove her clothes so he can wash her. Chisei is embarrassed at this and insists that she takes a bath by herself, but the other's persistence knows no boundary and forcefully washes her off. After cleaning her, he instructs her to come out once she is warm enough, while Chisei lies there her blushing, amorless face covered with her hands. Chisei feels grateful for finally taking a proper bath and wonders what would have happened if she had declined the auctioneer's offer. Suddenly, she hears some voices and out comes a trio of fairies. They are enchanted by the beautiful face of a human and tell her that she shouldn't see them as fairies, but rather as her friends. The fairies inform her that she is a sleigh beggy and question why such a mage would bring one over here. After she comes out of the bath, Chisei feels welcomed in the house, and seeing the confusion on her face, Elias tells her that she can ask any questions she wants. To start with, Chisei asks about the fairies. Elias reveals that they have been living here for a while and are attracted to anything new. She then asks about the term that fairies have given, and Elias responds that Slay Beggy is extremely rare among humans, akin to a queen bee among bees. They attract all sorts of things to themselves, such as fairies and other mysteries. Chisei feels that the ability to see every sort of magical creature may be common among their kind, but Elias tells her that it is a rare one to possess, even among the slave beggy. Though he assures her that she will be a great mage someday if she keeps getting assistance from the magical creatures. Elias is already close to her, like a family, and instructs her to choose a path for herself. Since being a magician is but a path among countless, he asks her to think about her decision as well. After he gives her a locket, Elias instructs his maid, Silver, to show the other up to her room. As the night passes, Chisei hears the fairy's voice, and the other tells her to go out for a midnight walk with her. She is persuaded easily by her, and after reaching the forest, the fairy asks about her family. Chisei reveals that if she had even loved her relatives slightly, she wouldn't be enjoying the calm breeze swirling under the luscious moon. After progressing further, the fairy reveals her true colors and demands that she visits the fairy kingdom with her, where she won't ever be alone and humans will never reach her. Chisei is initially attracted by the idea, but thinking how Elias treated her, she feels it would be a betrayal to leave like that. Elias follows her and reveals that he had known that she went out in the night and just wanted to see how the fairies would plot to get her on their side. Before leaving, the fairies warn him that they will be successful in taking her away someday, and he doesn't bother much. As they are about to get back, Elias picks her up to carry her and reveals that he doesn't want his future wife to be tired in the middle of the night. Chisei is amazed, and the other tells her that the sole reason he picked her up as his apprentice was so that she can grow up to be his wife. Chisei reminisces about her past before meeting Elias. Just then, Silky enters her room and takes her down the floor since Elias asked her to do so. He informs her that she has been asleep for two days because she is exhausted. She asks about Silky, and the other reveals that she is a neighborhood fairy who has been living here for a while now. 
Since she didn't have anything else to do, she chose to work here. Elias has prepared a trip for the two, so they can shop, and while she is preparing, she wonders whether she would work hard toward becoming an apprentice or a bride. As they reach the city, Chise is amazed to find that Elias is using a fake face, though when the other inquires about his looks, she straight up makes him feel down, thanks to her seriousness. Elias introduces her to his friend, Angelica Burley, a Magus craft artificer. When Chise reveals that he proposed to her, the other ridicules him for being a creep toward others and kicks him out. Burley explains the characteristics of magic and sorcery to her, and reveals how they are different from sorcerers. She hands a gemstone to Chise and instructs her to imagine a flower to perform magic. Chise remembers her mother taking her to a garden and accidentally creating a replica of a small garden from the crystal. Thankfully, Elias stops her in time, and Burley asks about her identity. After knowing that she is a slave Beggy, Burley criticizes her fairy, Hugo, for not informing her earlier, and tells Chise not to worry about it. Chise is still tense about the situation and apologizes to her, though the other just blames Elias, not letting her getting worried over anything. Burley then prepares several pieces of equipment for her since she will need them while practicing magic. After everything is done, the two return to their home, only to find out that the local church's priest, Simon, has been waiting for Elias. They invite him inside the house, and he reveals that he is there to request Elias' assistance. Since the church is keeping a look at his moves and has found out about his apprentice, Elias doesn't have the right to refuse, and he hears the other out. While they are discussing, Chise notices that they don't get along that well, and Silky hates Simon too. After he leaves, Elias instructs her to get ready and done with the mission as soon as possible, so they can head over to their honeymoon later. As they arrive in Iceland, Elias informs her that the reason they are here is that the dragons have been on the move lately, and just then, a dragon ascends behind and takes her as a hostage. The dragon rider comments on how Elias is not careful enough and reveals that they are on the way to the last den of the dragons. The dragon rider assures her that she will be safe by the time they land, and that she can stop worrying. As they descend, the dragon accidentally throws her into the water, and she wonders whether her life is even worth anything. She tries to get out and finds herself before a giant dragon covered in moss. Chise quickly realizes that the other is old, and he assures her that she is safe there. The dragon rider, Lindell, finds her and tells Elias to come out of his shadows. He had been following them, but was awaiting to see what they were trying to do with her. Elias instructs Chise not to get too close, because even though he seems compassionate, he is rather cruel. Just to him, though. The two have things to discuss, and Lindell asks Chise to remain with the small dragons and cheer them up. It is revealed that he is the caretaker of the dragons, and his duty is to make sure that humans don't stumble upon this place. After Chise plays together with the little one, she goes to the old one, Nevin's side, and he reveals that his time is up, and soon his new life will begin. Chise is perplexed by this, and the dragons explain that once their life reaches its end, they turn into trees and help nature grow. Unlike humans, dragons don't have a fear of death, and the little ones are actually excited that some they may turn into trees and be a part of nature. Chise feels envious of him because he is drying soon, and he jumps into her memories and advises that she should be grateful for every single day of her life. Since she can't fly herself, he offers to take up her mind to soar in the brilliant sky, and she is amazed by her experience. Elias and Lindell return and comment on how peaceful she looks there. Lindell is worried about her as she will be one of the last mages of her kind, and she instructs Elias to take good care of her as people are after Slay Beggy. Chise returns from her flight, only to find that Nevin's time is up, and the other advises that she doesn't grieve and accepts this as natural. As he is about to pass on, Nevin thanks Chise for sharing good moments in his last time, and reveals that he would be more than happy to have a wand made up of his branches for her. The glittering white are immensely overflowing with beauty, and they're all amazed at how magnanimous nature is for allowing them to witness something like this. As they are set to return, Chise passes out as she exhausted her energy when Nevin showed her the art of soaring. Chise had a weird dream about a cat, and as she wakes up, she is astounded to find that she has been asleep in Elias's lap. He informs her about their next destination, and the two are visited by a cat messenger. The cat informs them about the unrest within their kingdom, and wants Elias to resolve whatever is happening. As they reach there, the cat states that due to their nine lives, the cat developed wisdom and created their own kingship. They are suddenly attacked by another cat, though it's just one of the other's friends, and assures Elias that he isn't going to scratch his bride. Chise is amazed at how fast the rumors travel in this world. Chise asks about the cat king, and just then it appears. The little furry friend, Molly, reveals herself to be the king of cats and tasks Elias with his mission. Molly's owner, a little girl, comes outside of her house, and Elias quickly hides, revealing that he hates being around children. After she leaves, he heads to complete his mission while Molly informs Chise about the beginning of their kingdom. There was a man who loved killing cats, and one day, the first king of cats managed to gather others and kill him. 
Molly shows her the rot that is there for a while, and she must sacrifice her life to keep it at bay. She doesn't really care about her life, but is worried about her owner, someone whom she sees as her own child. Suddenly, a mysterious woman manifests besides Chisei, takes her into the air, and drops her down into the river. A woman named Mina appears behind her, and reveals that it is all her husband's fault for not forgetting about her and lingering so much that he started killing the cats. For the corrupt rot to disappear, Mina, an already deceased woman, asks Chisei to kill them both so everybody can return to their usual lives. She is picked up by Elias, and later he hands her all the necessary equipment to cast magic on the rot. Elias can't do that because he specializes in shadow magic, and only Chisei is a suitable candidate. As she is about to destroy the rot, a pair of sorcerers appear and stop her from doing so. Elias confronts them and recognizes one of them. Renfred reveals that Elias deliberately concealed the truth about Slay Beggies having a short span of life from Chisei. After Renfred reveals the bitter truth, Alice informs Chisei how she is just a fancy jewel, rare and fragile. They start convincing her to defect from Elias' side and join them. However, seeing as they are torturing Ariel, she attacks them and saves her friend instead. She reveals her intentions of not disobeying Elias as he is the only one who ever considered her as a family, and Elias quickly comes to her defense. The others immediately escape, and Elias instructs Chisei to complete her task. After she confronts the corruption, she, along with Ariel and Molly, jumps into Matthew's memories, where he meets a sorcerer at a bar and tells him about his wife's condition. Taking advantage of his misery, the other asks to see his wife, and after examining her, the sorcerer reveals that she has no cure, and that the only way he can save her is by sacrificing cats. The following day, Mina is looking for him, and one of her friends tells her that she saw her husband going into the forest, and she follows. As she comes across him, her eyes can't believe what is up front, and she is horrified by his experiment. The sorcerer appears and convinces Matthew to forcefully drink the potion. After drinking it, instead of getting healthier, Mina's body turns to splash blood, and the other resolves to kill more cats, as he believes it is the solution. His wife's cat, the first king of cats, appears outside and attacks him, killing him on the spot. Chisei can only sympathize with Mina, and she asks her to erase their souls. However, Chisei is trying to find a way to save them, and eventually she instructs Ariel to pass them on to the heavens. Matthew and Mina reunite once more, and the latter advises Chisei to live her life as happily as she can. As Chisei realizes that she now has Elias to depend on, she starts worrying about death at last. Outside the rot, Renfred and Elias have a chat, where the former believes that she isn't going to succeed, and it would be best that they take on the job. Luckily, Chisei is done with it just in time, and she sees that Renfred is relieved to have everything solved. Renfred and Alice confront the sorcerer from Matthew's memories, while Elias and Chisei get ready to leave. On their way, Chisei reveals how she feels about him and touches his face, embracing his love. Elias is amazed that it is the first time she has appreciated him this much, and Molly feels that the two have a bright future ahead. Elias assures Chisei that even though her expected life is just three more years, Chisei falls asleep in his arms, and he takes her to the forest, where she replenishes her magic. As she is lying there asleep, Simon comes to check up on her, while Elias comments that he is being a creep. Suddenly, a beautiful woman arrives in the forest, and is revealed to be the Queen of Fairies. Titania has deep hatred for people who worship foreign gods, and immediately kicks Simon out of the forest. She reveals that she cannot tolerate the sight of someone like that. After that, the Fairy King, Oberon, makes his entrance and admires how talented Chisei seems. He helps her replenish her magic and wake up, but she is afraid of his weird gazes. Oberon starts teasing the two about having kids, making both of them blush. As their task is fulfilled, their assistant immediately orders that they head back while informing Elias that he is never welcome in their kingdom due to some events of the past. Elias takes Chisei up in his arms, and the two head back to their home. Will Elias find a way to prolong her lifespan? What do you guys think? Let us know down in the comments, and as for everything else, don't forget to drop us a like, share it with your friends, and subscribe to Annie Recap for more awesome anime suggestions like this on your feed. Peace!